On the first day of submissions, couch quiet gave to me. Today's submission misencouragement comes from Brisbane's own best selling author and all round nice guy. Oh, and he comes highly recommended from Oprah, as in the Oprah. It's Trent Dalton! I don't have an internal monologue. I've discovered oh. recently that it's something that people have. Yeah. And so when I look at stuff in the world, it's silence. I just see things and then <laughs> there's, there's no chat in my mind. And I've discovered recently that most people that I talk to have this internal dialogue, this monologue going on. And I wonder if you have one. How do you, how do you think? <laughs> wow, my question. wow. Well, I'll tell you my internal monologue as you're saying that. I can't believe I'm sitting uh, with the woman who created Pub Choir, which is like one of my favourite things like on the planet. Uh, one of my family's favourite things that we love. Um, but I love what you're talking about. I love because <laughs> that's brilliant that you don't. And I love people who don't have the internal monologue. And that would get you into trouble all the time. It does. And it gets me into trouble all the time. And, and people call that, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve. And uh, So you and don't have one? I don't think I really do, and I get myself into no end of strife because of it. And, well, you read any of my books. Like, they, they read like a guy who's just uh, internally monologuing out loud, you know, and, not, and I, don't, I try not to save anything. And I think you need to create that way. I think, I think my favourite writers and my favourite uh, songwriters write from uh, a, a, a valve that cuts straight from the heart to the thing that they're creating. And I, and I think you can't let your internal monologue get in the way sometimes. And he, don't even get me started because in writing, like, here's the thing I like, I think about writing and here's the thing about pub choir. Um, all good things come from the heart. And, and it's this thing, this untrustworthy, horrible, deceitful thing called the brain that always gets in our way. And, uh, and I found on, you know, I'm no expert and I've got so much to learn in the whole novel writing business, but both times I've done it, I've just said, forget that internal monologue, Trent. And because I don't really have it anyway. And so it's like, write as if you're just, it's just coming out. And then from the heart to the fingertips, which you're hoping to fill with electricity, and then get that down on the page. And then hopefully that beautiful transaction, when the reader comes to read it, they feel that as well. And uh, I just think that's a really great way to sort of, to create. So I just... Because I, re I feel like that's why I like reading and I love reading your books. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's really beautiful. I, because it, it, it describes, um, like I said, like a vividness to the world and to a person and to a character and to a place um, in a way that I feel like I don't necessarily think of the world. Like I just see things and I'm like, it's pretty like tree oh, you know? right, right. and then when I read this it kind of makes my my world sort of come alive in my mind because you are able to ascribe you know details to things oh, which... that's, that's really cool yeah. well <laughs> but here's the flip side of that in in writing even my last book all our shimmering skies there's a character in that book Yukio he's a Japanese fighter pilot who literally falls from the sky into that beautiful Australian Northern Territory landscape and I wanted him to feel the way I do sometimes. If I remind myself to do this, right, it's a great trick we can all do every now and then, is pretend like you just landed from Mars in your own backyard. And if you look at all of these things as, as if you, you're seeing life for the very first time, and, and I made Yukio do that as he's walking through, so he's stopping at every caterpillar that he sees on a tree. And, and I just love that idea of slowing life down. So, so I have to actively do that. So whilst I say that in the writing process, it's all very urgent. But in the thinking about the details, I am definitely slowing down and going, okay, what do I think that even looks like? Or, you know, when a kid looks at a cloud and says, I see a dinosaur, like that's a, that's a, that's a thing of magic that every kid in Australia does every day. Yeah. And life comes along and bashes that kind of magic out of us, mm. you know, and, and uh, I think writers and, and songwriters and are people who, who secretly draw that magic back. I feel the same way about singing which is I think we start with this sense of joy oh, and wow. like urgency to be involved when you're a kid and then just slowly as an adult, the, I, I think that urge lives within us but we just become less, I don't know, willing to, to put ourselves out there with singing. Oh, man. When you do, when you release yourself to it and you kind of give every piece of your heart and soul to it, you realise the, the joy. This house right here, like this is a bad singing perfectly sanctioned area it's a safe space <laughs> like my wife sings beautifully but I sing 
I, I, I have zero vocal talent, but what I, I make up for that in just sheer enthusiasm with the singing. So I'll wake up and try and hit some Jeff Buckley high note that just <laughs> tanks. Well, it's not an early morning song, but okay. It's not really, right? You can't be singing Last Goodbye on uh, 6 a.m., but you'll sort of let rip because you just feel that, right? You're happy yeah. and you just let rip. And I know, I know secretly my daughters are laughing and they're embarrassed, but they go, bloody hell, Dad, good on you for giving them a try. <laughs> oh, look, they're, you know, that's the history of my favourite singers. Anyway, are just those people who aren't, uh, you know, the, they're not the most technically proficient, but they just had all the heart. And anyway, but that's I agree. That's yeah. the feeling I get when I walk into the, you know, Fortitude Music Hall of Tivoli and, I'm, and you're up there, right? Well, so... Just, you- well, you're, yeah. you're saying that you, you don't consider yourself like a high quality or may, maybe performance oh. ready for the public oh, man, singer. No. So then what no was way. it like to go, go to a real pub choir show and have to sing in public in front of unknown people? What's that like? I, I've never done it. <laughs> oh, on you're the, the one. Stage. You're on stage. <laughs> What's it like? Can I just tell you sincerely? Yeah, sure. I don't know whether you're aware of what you've created. I have some, <laughs> some notion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you've actually gone and found like our collective soul like oh, that's how whoa. deep that's how big i think this is no i'm I'm, I'm, I'm really serious and uh thank you i i think I, well here's a writer's perspective is you have to write from all five senses to get to this thing we call the sixth sense and i don't mean that in a spooky spiritual <laughs> way i mean actually the sixth sense that we can't explain which mm. is the, the the realms of why we love our kids and and why we love our parents and 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 this thing we call the soul mm. and when i'm in that bloody pub choir and I'm feeling it, and I'm just like, it gives me chills, Astrid. Like, it's, um, you know, and, and man, I did this Truly Madly Deeply one, and we had this friend from Texas and these dear friends of ours, diehard metalhead. So Savage out. Garden was perfect for Savage him. Garden yeah. was the perfect <laughs> choice. And I'm explaining to him, well, this song Truly Madly Deeply, you know, and, and he knew it, right? It's huge, that song. I'm going, it's probably not your cup of tea, Brad, but uh, but you should see what this Astrid does. She has a way of getting people from all walks of life to agree, right? And, and you know, 2020, right? It's hard to get the world to agree on anything. You know, we are so divided sometimes. You know, it feels a bit divided this year. You have made us agree and realise that we can agree that C to G to A minor to E minor is a beautiful thing and 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 that is something that we do like i walked into that and i realized it was a temple and and it was as close to i'm not i'm not religious but it's like that was as close to religion as i ever got and it was like i swear and i just man my wife and i drove home from that just going what just happened like it's like and i know that everyone watching this who's been a part of one of your choirs would feel this and i know my man brad felt it because we you got a picture this metalhead <laughs> double parked. He was, he, was, he was double parked with beers, as I was, right? We're in that Fortitude Music Hall. And you do was... what you do to get through. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, that's it. It's the Dutch courage. It's like, break that barrier and submit yourself to Savage Gut, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think Darren Hayes is just this amazing vocalist. I think mm. he's just got one of the most amazing voices around. And then he comes on, does the video, it spies us all. And you're up there just powering away, making it all work. And I watch Brad, and and I'm behind Brad a bit, and and we're doing the male parts, and and it was the I'll be your hope, I'll be your love, be everything. You like you had to sort of yeah, descend yeah, with it. Yeah, descending. Yeah, yeah. And Brad was electrified. <laughs> I'm telling you, you had not seen a Metallica metalhead loving Savage Garden more. And and I just thought, look at what you made him do. And, <laughs> and sorry, he, Brad. <laughs> uh, he he came he came back to our place and just said that that was worth traveling to Australia for, you know? And Whoa. I was just like, man, it was just like, it made our day. We could not have done anything better to show them our city, our country and who we are than what you've got going on with these pub choirs. Oh anyway, I just had to God, get that off my dry. chest. I just, I just internally monologue that out loud. I'm here but, to give you compliments. All right. But it's, um, <laughs> no, but it's, it's something very special. And Thank you. well, here's my, you know, and I genuinely feel like that's what actually music does. And I, mm-hmm. I actually think music gets us there quicker than a 400 page book can, you know? And it's like, we're just, I'm trying to write, right? In these books I write, I'm trying to get people to the feeling that you get them to in four minutes, you know? And, and it's like, it's, uh, it's a, you it's do a real okay. treat. Yeah. No, no, thanks. Yeah, well, I yeah. think like singing is very primal. Like oh. when you give people permission to do it without the oh. concern of being perfect at it, you know, like it's totally. so freeing just to like do this very human thing that just lives inside us for free, you know? Oh. Like everyone has this ability if you just 
tell them it's okay. It's which okay. Is sort of what I'm trying to do with submissions. Uh, is I want people <laughs> it's <a> happy submissions. <laughs> love it. Um, love our it. new favorite holiday. Um, <laughs> is is I want because people doing virtual choir are missing out perhaps on that feeling of bonding with other humans right, with this primal right. activity of singing. Yeah. And I'm yeah. trying to remind everyone at home that even though you are doing this in isolation from one another, we are still each contributing this human experience to this shared whole. And it, I think it probably feels a bit scarier for people to be alone and to do this and to trust the process. And so even singing or not, how do you have maybe some advice for people to overcome this fear of inadequacy in adding their voice to the collective whole? Oh, it's, it's the same. I'm fascinated that you say that. It's so interesting. And, and I'm, I think I've felt that with uh, some of the virtual couch choirs where, oh, gee, suddenly I feel dorky just doing it in my own living room. You know, yeah. why is that? But I was probably more comfortable singing Truly Madly Deeply with thousands. Mm. You know, that, that, that's really interesting. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, but I say the same thing um, to any writer. I, I get a lot of people saying to me, oh, Trent, how did you do it? How did you just have the kind of strip back, the kind of... Um, well, it's all ego and stuff, right? It's all that ridiculous stuff like ego that we Creativity get caught up in pride fun. and all that. Yeah. It is. It's so, you know, all of that stuff stands yeah. in your way. And I say the same thing to anyone with a blank white page on a computer screen, which is that black ink was is so much better. No matter what it says, no matter what you wrote down in black ink, it's better than what was there before. Mm-hmm. And no matter how bad that note sounds... <laughs> It was just silence before that, and uh, you know, and I just, I just love that so much. So what if, what if bloody Eddie Vedder didn't have the courage to go, oh, uh, <laughs> heard I'm still alive, you know, that, that freaking note, that, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, it was a new note, <laughs> a new note, that was a new sound, a new note, and that changed my freaking life, yeah. Astrid, like that, yeah. that, that, him doing that, just that little angsty kind of aching wail that everyone you know probably considers cheesy now but it's sacred to me because he was willing to dig down deep in his soul and that note echoed all the way to Brackenridge Brisbane Queensland and to a bloody 13 year old bloody kind of angsty mopey kid who's a bit <laughs> lost out of Housing Commission Brackenridge heard it and uh and realized that man you know maybe I can give one day the way that guy's giving, and and I, I just think that's singing, and and that's what these things. And so, what I would try and say is just like just let rip because what was there before was nothing, and and we need to give of ourselves mm. so we're not just living in this world of nothingness, you know. And but the beautiful thing about it is, is when all those it's the greatest sort of metaphor for life. What you do, right? It's all these mixed up, off bum notes mixed with beautiful notes and beautiful yes. singers that makes it all come together in this thing that just sounds perfect. And it's like, well, like, isn't that, that's the world, right? That, like, yeah. that's life. Like, that's how we get by and how we get through. And I know I'm sounding cheesy. I'm totally internally monologuing now, but it's like... We called it submissionist. It's fine. <laughs> here's my submissionist is to let rip because that's yeah. it. Because, because when you have all of that difference, all mm. of that messed up, mixed up colour then that's where you get perfection. And, and I just think that's so powerful. Like, yeah, that's, I mean, what a, what a thing to do. Could, could there be a better thing to do around Christmas time? I At the end so. of this, like, <laughs> bin fire of a year, as you call it. I yeah, wholeheartedly like, yeah. agree. I, I would characterise you as a very optimistic person. At least oh, outwardly, wow. you're a very optimistic person. Yeah, and your books yeah. are very you know, optimistic characters. And this year has been really difficult for a lot of people in many different ways. Um, how have you kept your optimism? How have you kept looking forward to what's coming next? And... Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, that notion is at the heart of anything I write, to mm-hmm. be honest. Um, both of my books are uh, about young characters who are uh, having to find their own inner optimism in the face of utter despair. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I get very impressed with any Aussie kid in particular. And I've written about Aussie kids doing that very thing for about 20 years as a journalist. And... I'm very impressed with those kids who managed to walk the knife edge of not having the magic bashed out of them by life. And, uh, and when I'm writing those stories, I think I'm writing to myself at 13, to be honest. And, and I'm sort of going, hey, kid, you did all right and well done because you stayed optimistic. And 
I have this deep, deep optimistic streak because I kind of had to, and my brothers had to, and uh, back in the day, and um, and so it's very powerful. And I and I go th- sort of through a year like this, it just sort of reminds me of that twelve-year-old kid who's probably, you know, went through way anything worse than I ever went through in twenty twenty. So I stay true to that kid and and go, you're the luckiest bastard on earth track like i really honor that kid by just going you never would have thought you'd get to sit here with astrid talking about <laughs> savage garden you know and it, but it's all that stuff is is never lost on me mm. i try and remind myself um about just the the good fortune of two girls across the hall and my, my wife and you know and just all that small stuff mm. that what it's taught me this year and you know i'm pretty ambitious and i think i i got swept up for a while there in book kind of things like how was my book going and you know like just silly stuff that you, you know, like, I made him put it there oh and you see me on social media you should see me like when someone says a nice thing about my book like I'm like thank you it's like I need it you know like it's so weird and I just have to stop and go man you don't need that stuff all you needed were those two girls and that that wife of yours inside and and so it's sort of that helps me stay optimistic mm. and but you know I've been clinging to this line my my brother Ben texted me a line uh, a couple of months ago and it was sort of it was multifaceted why he sent this and uh he just said oh here's a cool quote he just and it was a Hemingway quote and he said uh life uh breaks us all eventually life breaks us all eventually um but those it doesn't break it kills and uh and what that means is uh if you don't yield to life when you are feeling a little bit broken it can kill you so embrace mm. the broken bits of yourself and mm. and try to be strong at the broken places and uh uh and and yield to a tough year like this yeah and remember that of course the light's coming and and Hemingway of course knew that better than anyone he had a lot of darkness in him and uh but it was because of that darkness that he could write about the sun and the sun also rising better than anyone and uh and I love that I love looking at life like that 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 there are these sort of years mm. and you know, but man, 2021 will come, 2022 <laughs> will come, and we'll be in Fortitude Music Hall, <clears throat> and we'll be singing Alive by Pearl Jam or something. Just <laughs> and I'll to, get just you to, to do that first age. note. <laughs> and it'll be the time of our lives again, you know, and yeah. so it's uh, it's the darkness and the light. <laughs> so I think I swallowed <laughs> a fly or something in my own, but you know. It's okay for it the in. emotion. It's all the details. Yeah, 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 I'll get emotional. You don't yeah. have to pretend. It's a fly, I swear. Look, I, look yeah. I, I think um, talking to you makes me feel optimistic about oh, life. No, and no. and I think, you know, we, we've got to look for good, the good even now. Like it's not about just holding on for what comes next, but there is so much goodness around us now. Oh, right now. And yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think singing is, is a quick way to get there. It to gets you there that. quick. <laughs> How fast does it get you there? Yeah, so, so right. look, uh, thank you for singing with us, with us in the past and maybe we can get a little Christmas submission uh, for submissions for me for this couch choir, not to put the pressure on. But what, right now? Call, no, no, but right no, now? No, no. We'll, uh, we'll look forward to receiving it's your coming. video. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, you know it's coming. Yeah. Seriously, we'll be doing it. We'll be doing it. The Dalton family household will be there. <laughs> There's like a little, a little brown leather couch there. We'll yep. be like lined up. And like, up. man... We've got some talent coming at you. We've got a kid yeah. who's in choir at school. <laughs> I've seen We've the got choir my wife schedule. Versed in the whole choir stuff. Yeah, yeah. You see the calendar up there? No, well, um, Asher, I can't wait to submit for submission. Uh, <laughs> like honestly, Happy it's submission. when I'll know the kind of years done when we when we hit like click and enter on that submission submission. <laughs> Uh, that's when I'll know kind of. It makes me happy yeah. to hear the word just every time. But Isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <It's a mishmas. laughs> well, thank you so much for talking with me. Man, what an honor. I said we'd Thanks be at your house for 10 minutes and we still haven't left. So <laughs> Don't, don't leave. We're going to go sing some songs in here. See you guys later. Happy submissions. <laughs> happy submissions. <laughs> Season's greetings. The holidays are traditionally a time of giving and goodwill. And so we hope that these 12 days of submissions give you the encouragement that you need to submit your video to couchchoir.com. And while you're there, you'll be prompted to donate possibly some money to our partnered charity, Give It. And we are very grateful in advance for any money you're able to spare. Or maybe you will just share with us the gift of your voice. Season's greetings and happy submissions. <laughs> <laughs>